Hello kids! I'm back! And if it's your first time joining us for today, Hello! I'm Teacher Lil and welcome to Destiny Kids Church Online Sunday Service. That's right! We call our church Destiny because we believe in that word, Destiny. There is a verse in the Bible in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This verse means that God has an amazing plan for us. And that plan is meant not to harm us, but for us to have a hope and a future. This means that God only wants the best. Because His plans are always okay, approved, and the best. Can we repeat that all together? God's plan is always okay, approved, and the best. Alright, who's excited for today's lesson? It's great, but before that, we will first worship the Lord. Let's stand up, stretch up, and be ready to worship God.
So, did you enjoy that worship time, kids? I hope you did. At Kids Church, it is our prayer that all of us will make worship our lifestyle. So now, kids, we will go to today's lesson. For today, we will continue the series that we started last week. And that series is Superpower Series, Our Powers as Followers of Christ. So who among you kids want to be a superhero someday? Or you want to have superpowers? Who among you want that? Maybe some of you want to fly. Maybe some of you want to have superhuman strength. Maybe some of you want to be able to cast fire, water, or ice from your hands. Those things are really great, kids. But did you know, kids, that all of us can be superheroes and have superpowers in our own way? Did you know that, kids? It is said in our key verse for this series, Ephesians 6.10, that finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. So we see in this verse, kids, that we can be strong, we can be mighty and powerful, but in the Lord. So in this series, kids, we will learn more about our superpowers as Christians or as followers of Christ. Like last week, we talked about the power of words. We learned that words can bring destruction, words can bring life, and words should honor God. And who among you kids, you were able to put into practice what we have learned last week. You were able to say, polite and kind words to your parents, to your siblings, or to the people around, around you. Who among you kids were able to do that? Can you raise your hand? That's good job. You practiced your superpower. But if not, you can still keep on practicing it. The things that we will learn in this series, we will be practicing it for life. So always remember these things, kids. Okay? So for today, kids, we will learn about the second superpower as followers of Christ. This superpower is obedience. Can we say that together, kids? Say obedience. So what is obedience? Obedience is defined as a compliance with an order, request, law, or submission to another's authority. Does that seem complicated, kids? To simply put it, obedience means following. That when we are asked of something, we do it. For example, your parents told you, Can you pass the rice? Can you pass that glass of water? And you, you do it. That is obedience. Okay? So obedience just simply means following. So who do we obey? Firstly, of course, we obey God. And also, we obey our parents or our guardians at home. And next, we also obey people in authority. These are the people in government like president, vice president, mayors, barangay officials, so on and so forth. But this also include people in authority in our school like the principal, our teachers, and our advisors. So how can we say that obedience is a superpower? Did you know, kids, that obedience is powerful and that there is a blessing when we obey? Did you know that, kids? So for today, kids, we will take a look at a story in the Bible where we will see the power of obedience and the blessing that we can receive if we obey. Today, we will talk about the conquest of Jericho. This story can be found in Joshua chapter 6. So kids, if you have this story in your storybooks, you can go get it and read that story. But if not, keep on watching as we watch the conquest of Jericho.
the Faithful Hall of Fame, Joshua. This is Joshua. Oh, hey. Joshua was the leader of the Israelites, who God used to bring his people to the Promised Land. Yeah, let's do this. When God told Joshua it was time to take the Promised Land, Joshua sent spies into the city of Jericho. While those spies were in Jericho, Come on. they were protected by a woman named Rahab. <laughs> The spies promised to spare Rahab and her family when they took back the land. Yay! And she hung a scarlet cord from her window to remind them of their promise. See you soon! Now the Israelites had crossed the Jordan and were camped near the town of Jericho. Hey! Hello! One day, Joshua looked up. Huh? and there was a man standing before him. Hello. The man said, I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Joshua asked what the man wanted to tell him, and the Lord said he wanted Joshua to take the city of Jericho, All right. but that Joshua needed to follow his instructions exactly. You got it. Jericho was shut for fear of the Israelites. Yeah, went well, home. Huh? No one came out and no one came in. So the Lord told Joshua to gather his soldiers. And march around the city for six days. The priests were to take the Ark of the Covenant and seven priests were to go in front of it, blowing a ram's horn. On the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times and blow the horn. Then all the people of Israel were to give a great shout. Then what? And then the city walls would fall. Oh, yeah, let's do it. So Joshua said, shout for the Lord has given you the city. And the people did shout. Yeah! And the walls did fall. The Israelites overtook the city of Jericho as God had commanded. Rahab! They remembered Rahab because of her faithfulness. Joshua was faithful in carrying out God's commands, and the Israelites took many other cities as God told them they would. Oh, nice. For God will never fail to fulfill his promises. So the Israelites came to live in the land that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, Israel, Joseph, and Moses many years ago. So did you enjoy that story, kids? I hope you did. So what can we learn from that story about obedience? Treating skills. First, we can only obey if we listen. Second, obedience can be uncomfortable. And third, obedience brings blessings. Let's talk about each one. First, we can only obey if we listen. So kids, we saw in that story that before Joshua and the Israelites did anything, an angel appeared to them first. So God sent an angel to them to tell them what to do. And Joshua and the Israelites listened to the angel and did what the angel told them. So kids, remember this. We cannot obey, we cannot do anything if we don't listen first. Listening is important. Can we say that together, kids? Listening is important. It is important that we listen to God. That's why it is important that we pray and read our Bible because that's the time that we really get to hear from God. We get to ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Lord, what do you want me to do in my school, with my friends? It is important that we pray so that we are able to listen to God. And of course, kids, it is also important to listen 
to our parents. That when they tell us something, we are attentive. That we really look at them and that we hear what they are saying. Okay? So can I count on you on that, kids? That you will listen to God, you will listen to your parents, and you will listen to your teachers. Can I count on you on that? That's great. It is important that we listen so that we will know what to do and we can obey. Okay? And the second thing, kids, is obedience can be uncomfortable. Imagine, kids, that you are Joshua and you are told by God, Go and circle around the city, blow the trumpet and shout at the seventh time and the walls will crumble. Will you believe it? Maybe some of us will not. And some of us will think that that command is weird. How can we defeat a city by just circling around, shouting, and blowing a trumpet? How can we do that? That's impossible. And maybe for some of us, we will feel un uncomfortable. But the key is to just obey, even if things are uncomfortable. Most of the time, kids, when we are asked to do something, it can bring us to a place that feels uncomfortable. For example, right now, all of us are requested to minimize our going out, to limit going outside. Why? It is um, uncomfortable, but it is for our own safety. And most of the time, kids, when God tells us a command, we just have to follow, even if at times, it feels uncomfortable. That also applies to the commands our parents are giving us. Sometimes it feels uncomfortable but it is for our own good. For example, our parents told us, Can you clean up your toys after playing? You know kids, maybe that feels uncomfortable but that is for everyone's safety. What if someone can step on your toy and slip? And cause an accident or maybe your parents are telling you can you sleep first before playing can you rest first sometimes it feels uncomfortable to obey but that is for our own good and there are many many more examples of commands that seem uncomfortable if we obey them but bring blessing if we do and that is our third point kids Obedience bring blessing. Can we say that together, kids? Obedience brings blessing. We saw in the story that because Joshua and the Israelites followed the commands of God, they were able to conquer Jericho and they were able to fulfill what God has promised them to conquer that city. And you know, kids, when we obey, there is truly a blessing. We are protected from harm and we can fulfill God's promises. Like we saw in that story, imagine kids, if they attack Jericho head on, imagine most of them could have died or suffered. But because they followed God, the command of God, they were protected and none of them suffered. And also, they were able to fulfill God's promise to them they will be able to conquer that city. So this is true for us as well, kids, that when we obey, it can bring blessing. If we follow the commands to us, we can be protected from harm, and we can also fulfill God's promises in our lives. Who among you want that, kids? You want to fulfill God's promise in your life. Do you want that? So the key for us to have that is obedience. So remember those three things, kids, okay? Remember that when we obey, we have to listen. Obedience can be uncomfortable, but even if it is uncomfortable, we still do it because obedience can bring blessing. So now, kids, Let's go to our memory verse. Our verse for this week is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Before we memorize it, let's read it first. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. So for this week, kids, we will be memorizing verse 1 only. Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So for us to memorize it easier, let's do it with actions. Follow after me. Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Let's do it again. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So have you memorized that verse already, kids? Can you show me? That's great. Good job, kids. And always remember those verses, kids, that it is always right to obey our parents. And the Bible teaches us to honor our father and mother. And if we do that, it will go well with us. So now, kids, let's go to our artwork. Our artwork for this week is the Obedience Keys. So for us to do this artwork, let's follow this video. Hi kids! We will now go to our artwork. Now for this artwork, we need a pair of scissors, a marker, some strips of paper, the more colorful the better, and some yarn or some colorful rope that you have at home. Now, if you don't have any of these items, you can find other items in your household, like for this one. You can use any of these as alternatives. Now for the permanent marker, you can just use a ball pen or some any colorful marker or crayons at home. Now to start, we just need to draw a key on any of the strips of paper and cut them with your scissors. Now, if you are a younger kid, you might want to, you need to ask your parent or your guardian to help you with cutting so you don't hurt yourself. You can draw any type of key you want. It can be a funny looking key or a simple looking key. It's up to you. Now, you don't have to make it very perfect as long as you're doing, giving it your best. Now, I'm trying to cut multiple strips of paper with my scissors using one drawing of a key so I can reproduce more keys in just a couple of cuts. Reminder again for younger kids, please make sure that you are asking your parent or your guardian to help you with cutting. Next, I will draw a lock in one of the strips of paper, just like this one, and then we'll also cut it. After drawing the lock, I will write these words on the lock. I 
will be. Next, we will write these words on each of the keys that we produced. After writing on the keys, you will get your yarn or your rope, and then we will start assembling everything that we did. So you cut, you cut a small strip of rope or yarn, and then you put the lock and then the keys to the rope, and assemble them just like this. Tie the rope like this. I'm making a double loop. There. If you can't do it, you can ask your parent or your guardian to do it for you. Ask assistance. So there. We will do this artwork, kids for us to be always reminded that when we obey, we do what is right, we do it quickly, cheerfully, completely, and with extra mile. Okay kids, so before you go and do this artwork, let's just close in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Lord, Forgive us if at times we are disobedient, that we don't follow you and our parents. Lord, today we ask that you would help us to
to be obedient children. Lord, give us strength to obey you, our parents, and everyone in authority. Lord, we continue to pray for the frontliners that you would protect them. We also pray, Lord, for the sick people that you would heal them. We ask, Lord, that this pandemic would end. And Lord, we continue to pray for our families. Lord, please always watch over us. Please always protect our loved ones. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless and provide for our needs. Love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So that's our lesson for today, kids. Always remember that obedience is powerful and that our obedience can bring blessing to us. So see you again next week as we continue our superpower series. Bye!